Hello, I'm Rick Wicklin from SAS. This video is about how to write a custom parallel program by using the IML action in SAS VIA. SAS VIA supports many actions that perform parallel computations. These actions use SAS Cloud Analytics Services, or CAS. For example, many actions in statistics and machine learning use parallel processing to analyze big data. Examples include summary statistics, predictive models, clustering, classification, and more. The IML action is different because it enables you to write a custom parallel program. It supports functions that enable you to distribute a computation across multiple nodes and threads. If you are not familiar with the IML language in SAS, IML is the interactive matrix language. It is a high level programming language that enables you to use matrices and vectors to implement custom algorithms. Traditionally, SAS programmers use PROC IML to write analyses that are not otherwise available in SAS procedures. The IML action supports the IML language in SAS VIA. In addition to the functionality in PROC IML, the IML action supports ways to distribute tasks to many threads. In short, the IML action supports parallel programming. There isn't enough time to describe all that the IML action can do, but I want to show three things. You can run existing SAS IML programs on the controller. You can run custom tasks in parallel, and you can use SAS IML functions to score CAS tables in parallel. You can submit via actions from many languages, including Lua, Python, and R. I will be using PropCAS in SAS because it supports a source block. You can put the IML program inside the source block in a natural way that preserves indenting. You can run many existing PROC IML programs from within the action. The kinds of IML statements that need to be modified are listed on this slide. An important difference is that PROC IML reads and writes SAS data sets, whereas the IML action reads and writes CAS data tables. Let's see how to run a basic IML program by using the IML action. The program runs in PROC CAS in SAS. You can put the IML program inside a source end source block. On this slide, the program is inside the blue rectangle. The first statement in the block prints hello world. The program then defines and calls an IML function called get five card prob. The function computes a 10 element vector that contains the probabilities of the 10 kinds of poker hands, one pair, two pairs, three of a kind, and so forth. After the end source statement, you can run the IML action and use the code equals parameter to specify the program. This slide shows the results. The first output is the result of the print statement. The second output is the table from the get five card prob function. The table shows that it is highly probable to get zero pairs or one pair when you are dealt five random cards. However, the probability of a royal flush is about one in a million. One of the new features in the IML action is support of parallel computation. There are two main ways to compute in parallel. The MapReduce function enables you to run a function called a mapper on every thread. The results of the mapper are aggregated across all threads by the reducer function, which combines all the results. For example, a reducer function might perform a sum or a concatenation. 
Canonical examples include simulation, bootstrapping, and other resampling methods. The par tasks function enables you to concurrently run multiple independent tasks. For example, you can compute random values, perform a big matrix multiplication, and compute the eigenvalues of a large matrix simultaneously. Let's see how to run a massive simulation in parallel. We will simulate one billion five-card hands and use the empirical counts to estimate the probabilities of each poker hand. The syntax of the MapReduce function is shown on this slide. The function takes three input arguments, the data, which are sent to the mapper function on each thread, the mapper function, which runs on each thread, and the reducer function, which aggregates the results from the mapper functions. The map reduce function returns the aggregated result. This function is ideal for independent and essentially identical computations, such as Monte Carlo simulation and resampling methods. This slide shows a program that runs a Monte Carlo simulation in parallel. The main module is a mapper function called count hands, which does not fit on the slide. The mapper simulates many five card poker hands and evaluates each hand to determine if it is one pair, two pairs, and so on. The mapper returns a 10 element vector of counts for each of the 10 kinds of poker hands. The default reducer is summation, so the reducer returns the cumulative counts of each kind of poker hand that occurred during the simulation. This is definitely a custom parallel computation that is not available in any other action or procedure. The program simulates a total of 1 billion poker hands. This many hands are necessary because, as we saw earlier, the probability of a royal flush is very small. For rare events, you need a large number of simulations to accurately estimate the probabilities. The results of the simulation are shown here. The third column shows the estimated probabilities based on simulating 1 billion poker hands. The fourth column shows the exact probabilities as computed on the previous slide. The last column shows the estimates are very close. The second table shows that the simulation ran in less than six seconds on a cluster that has many nodes, each with many threads. A second way to distribute tasks to many threads is to use the par tasks function. The syntax of the par tasks function is shown on this slide. The function takes three input arguments. The first input argument is a vector of function names. The second input argument is a list of arguments in which the first argument is sent to the first task, the second argument is sent to the second task, and so forth. The third input argument is optional. You can use it to specify how to distribute the tasks over nodes and threads. The par tasks function returns a list. The first item in the list is the result from the first task, the second item is the result from the second task, and so on. The par tasks function is ideal when you have several independent, but not necessarily identical, tasks to distribute. As an example, suppose you want to compute three quantities for a symmetric matrix, a determinant, an inverse, and a set of eigenvalues. You can write IML functions that return the result of each operation. The results will come back in a list. The determinant is a scalar. The inverse is a matrix and the eigenvalues are a vector, so each result will have different dimensions. Here is the main portion of the program. To save space, I've omitted the procas statements such as source and source and run. The top of the program defines three tasks. Each task is a thin wrapper around a built-in IML function call. 
the matrix A is a 1000 by 1000 symmetric toplets matrix. The vector tasks contains the names of the IML functions to call. The list, args, defines the arguments for each task. In this program, each task receives the same matrix A. The call to the par tasks function distributes the computation across threads. If desired, you can extract the items in the list. A third way to perform parallel computations is to score a data set. In this context, scoring means applying a predictive model to rows of a data set. In the IML action, you can use the score function to run a function in parallel on all threads. Each thread is fed an observation or a group of observations from a CAS table. The IML function computes a value or values for each row, which are written to a second CAS table. All this I.O. and scoring occurs in parallel. You can perform the scoring while running the IML action, but you can also delay the scoring until a later time. You can write an analytical store or also called an A store that contains the information needed to score a future data set. You can then use PROC A store in CAS or the A store action to score future data. Let me give an example of how to score rows of a CAS data table. Suppose you have a data set that contains 5 million time series. Each time series is a row and there are 1,024 columns where each column is a time point. There is also an ID column that uniquely identifies the rows. The time series for ID equals one is given in the scatter plot. By using four lines of code, you can apply a wavelet filter to smooth the scatter plot. The wavelet filter function is called in parallel for every row of the data table. It applies a wavelet decomposition to the signal, then computes an inverse wavelet transform to smooth the signal. The function returns a row vector that has 1,024 columns. The score function specifies that the wavelet filter function will be called for each row. It specifies the names of the input and output variables as well as the names of the input and output tables. When you run the program, it reads the 5 million time series and creates an output data table that has 5 million smoothed signals. An example of the output is shown graphically. The scatter plot shows the original signal. The curve shows the smoothed signal as computed by applying the wavelet filter. Again, I stress that this computation occurs in a massively parallel manner, as indicated by the diagram on this slide. The input observations are read in parallel. The wavelet smoother is applied in parallel, and the output data table is written in parallel. The previous example scored the data by using the IML action but you can also save the scoring code to an A store. You can then use PROC A store at a later time to apply the wavelet transform to new data. In summary, this presentation introduces the IML action in SAS VIA. The IML action is different from other actions because it enables you to write a custom parallel program the presentation shows several ways to perform custom computations in parallel, including the MapReduce function, the ParTasks function, and the Score function. Thanks for watching. For more information, see the paper in the Proceedings of the 2020 SAS Global Forum.